afternoon everyone this is Tony from her homestead skills and welcome to the channel I know that a lot of you have been dealing with uh, bitter cold temperatures we have to accept that it's normal for here I wouldn't say that uh, work <laughs> I'm accustomed to it any more than you are it always comes as a difficult situation for me personally, some people really enjoy it, others do not. I'm not one to um, bundle up in a big way, so I don't do a lot of outdoor activity in the winter time when it's cold out, and especially when it's this bitter. Today, I think the temperature is minus 10, and that doesn't count for the wind chill factor, so it's quite a bit colder than that. And fortunately, I think tomorrow we're going to have the beginning of a reprieve and we'll probably be around zero for a change and then for the rest of the week it's actually going to be uh, just above zero. Yay! <laughs> Warmth. Uh, I think that's our January thaw that we tend to get around here. Anyway, so much for the weather report. I know that a lot of you are struggling with the bitter cold that you're not accustomed to and uh, I sympathize, I'm, you know, definitely. I did have to go out today. I wanted to find some buttons to finish my skirt. Uh, I did put some buttonholes in the waistband today. I had put the zipper in the other day. And so uh, I did have to go out finally to, and, and you know what, it makes you feel better even if you go out for a very short period of time and um, with a specific goal in mind to do a few things. So I went to Costco picked up a few things like milk and eggs and uh, cream and that sort of thing. Oh, and coffee was on sale, so I picked up another tin of coffee, yay. I think coffee is one of those items that is starting to come down in price, one of the few. So um, I did pick up one tin. And uh, these days it's Tim Hortons, <laughs> and Tim Hortons isn't bad at all. Uh, I prefer getting whole beans, but uh, no, the Tim Hortons is working out just fine. And $16 versus 25 I think I'm going to go for Timmy's. And Timmy's is basically a Canadian brand, for those of you who aren't familiar with it. I don't know if they have a Tim Hortons in the U.S. or not, but uh, I think they might have a few. Um, but it's definitely a very big Canadian brand. Um, coffee shops by the way coffee shops so um, yeah I did go to Costco and then I went and picked up a little packet of buttons and I finished my skirt yay so that's skirt number one I think I'm going to uh, look at making a second one because I definitely have enough fabric and I'll probably make it longer Although I've already cut the lining, but the lining doesn't have to be the full length anyway, and there was only so much lining material, whereas the fabric for the skirt itself uh, can be uh, longer than the lining, and I have a lot of that fabric yet. So um, I do have an extra zipper, and I do have more buttons. So this time around, I have all the materials, and let me tell you, it's a lot easier to put the zipper in while you're forming the skirt, like before you've got it put together. When you put those two panels together, rather than when the whole skirt's completely done. So, bear the, I have to bear that in mind next time I decide to make one of those. Make sure I have the zipper at least on hand. <laughs> Makes the job so much easier. Um, it, it lines everything up a lot better. So... But anyway, that's a little bit of sewing, a little bit of cooking. Oh yes, I've been doing some canning uh, potatoes and uh, not canning my chicken stock. And uh, yeah, it's, it's all good. It's all good. Got to get that canner out again. And there is, um, there's something else that I want to can up and that is the butternut squash. I'm down to two jars of butternut squash. And that is one of those things I used to make pumpkin pie. Uh, believe it or not, butternut squash makes a really awesome pumpkin pie. And uh, really, really, really nice. Now, getting back to my meat pies that I've been making, I made two batches. And the first batch, Mark really liked the filling. 
He's never been fussy on my pie crust, and I've made a, the same pie crust that I make for pies, and he always wants it a little flakier. So I studied and studied, and you know what, it's been years and years and years that I've been making pie crust, and I finally came upon a method to make flaky pie crust without going through tons of effort and tons of time because to make flaky pie crust is fold it over, put it in the fridge, fold it over, put it in the fridge, fold it over, put it in the fridge. But there are, there is a simple method that I found and I did test that with the second batch of um, meat pies and sure enough, that turned out really flaky. So now I have a recipe for flaky pie crust and of course he preferred the filling in the first batch without the mushrooms so now I have it down pat I know what filling he likes and I liked it too I think I preferred the one without the mushrooms as well for some reason it just seemed to uh, make it milder flavor um, so the, the first one just felt more meaty and of course it was because it was basically mostly meat so, um, which is fine because you have the pastry, you have, you know, why not have it mostly meat? But now that I have a flaky pastry down pat, I think I have my recipe that I want totally for meat pies, for apple uh, pies, for just about any pie, yay. <laughs> Nothing nicer than a flaky pastry. And it's got to be all butter, all butter. And the ratio is basically you're using more butter and less flour. So that's one thing, but th there is a formula. Anyway, so much for that. I'm really thrilled that I've picked up on that. So moving forward, um, check your pantry. Things aren't going to get any better. Uh, I highly recommend that uh, keep an eye on what's going on in the world and what's going on around you. Uh, there's... <laughs> Uh, the election in the U.S. is certainly going to create a lot of drama, a, a lot of false reporting, uh, a lot of uh, who do you believe and what do you believe, because everyone's trying to sell their version of reality, and probably it doesn't even uh, sync with what your version of reality is. Um, everyone's got their own and uh, sadly it's not a unified one anymore it used to be fairly unified but these days it just seems to have splintered off into a, a million different pieces and everyone's got their agendas and everyone's got their <sighs> doesn't seem as though the law matters too much to very many people anymore which is very sad very sad because nothing but chaos and confusion could come from something like that. And we're no different here in Canada. We're no different. We have our political machinations going on all the time as well. So um, look after yourself, look after your family. Um, keep prepping. Prices are still going to go up, unfortunately, for uh, beef and pork and chicken prices are still going up and you know what that beef that I used for my patties has been sitting in my freezer for a while so I'm thinking that was I mean that was part of the reason I decided to make those is because this ground beef has been sitting there I think I had sectioned it off to make hamburgers and uh, we you know just haven't made any hamburgers lately and I thought well no that really needs to be used up and uh, Perfect. It was perfect. Mark is really enjoying them. Anyway, um, nothing wrong with having freezer-ready food, and that's what those turn out to be. And, and yes, I, I used to buy patties from the grocery store in a box, and they're nice. They were nice for a quick meal. Mine are better. <laughs> they're, they are a meat patty. They're similar, but um, homemade is always best. And even those patties, I think, used to be, I don't know, seven, eight dollars, nine dollars maybe. Now they're 12 and 13 for the same box. Like everything, everything's gone up in price. And uh, 
what I made my meat patties with, I already had everything in stock. So uh, onions and green peppers aren't too costly, and I certainly had the beef sitting there. So, uh, And I have enough there to make another few batches as well. So I think I will use that meat up first before I replace it and makes a nice quick meal. So yes, look after your pantry, look after your family. I, oh yes, the one interesting thing when I did go out to the stores yesterday was, yay, uh, well, when I went to buy the potatoes, I saw the first glimmerings of <laughs> preparation for spring. And that was that the, this particular grocery store had a um, rack of seeds. So all the vegetable seeds, all the uh, herb seeds. So yes, it's beginning. That even though it's still January, I think February is the time that a lot of people start their seeds here indoors because you need to do that. Okay, so yes, I do uh, uh, look forward now to picking out some seeds, thinking about what I want to plant for next year. It is time. It is time to start thinking about starting my seeds indoors. Uh, you might think it's early, but we need that time to uh, get a good start on the season. Anyway, this is Tony from Her Homestead Skills. Be prepared. Be ready. And be safe. Stay warm. Talk to you soon.